Good evening once again. It's time for Hold No Bars with Manzo and Adil. Wow, what another eventful week. And last, yesterday was yet another eventful day. But today, I want to say to all of you viewers, again, I'm going to speak for quite a while because so much has happened. Kevin is queuing up three shots for me. And I'll tell him when to come in with those three shots. But I want to say to David Arthur Granger that I am one of the hooligans who was out protesting against him and his illegal government yesterday in front of the Pegasus Hotel. David Arthur Granger, Manzur Nadir, was one of the many thousands of hooligans who was protesting yesterday. And I want to say to you, David Arthur Granger, you are a pathological liar. Now, viewers and listeners, let me say, a pathogen is a kind of virus that infects your system. And sometimes it's hard to get rid of. Sometimes you're born with it. Or, some, or sometimes you're so associated with all these infectious things. You become a host, a carrier. But David Granger has now transcended. That thing has developed into him, in him so much that he's become a pathological liar. He was out in Port Kaituma with all his illegal ministers, the illegal cabinet. This dictatorship was out in Port Kaituma today. And I'm asking Kevin to put up the words which he said today in Port Kaituma. So Kevin, let's get these words up. This is from Demerara Waves just this evening. Speaking in Port Kaituma on Friday, I wouldn't mention the next word. I will refer to the illegal president David Arthur Granger made it clear that the protesters alleged attempt to topple a vehicle with Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Karen Cummings, would not go unpaid. The People's Progressive Party organized a demonstration and my Minister of Foreign Affairs was going to that meeting. They tried to overturn the car Sorry, they tried to turn the car over. That is hooliganism, and somebody will pay for that. Those are the words of David Granger. Those are the words of David Granger today in Port Kaituma. Well, viewers and listeners, I was there. Kevin, put up one of the next pictures. Okay, you see... And I can name the person that is showing to the right of the picture. Member of Parliament, Harry Gill. That's Harry Gill holding the phone up. And if you notice, a little coolie boy next to Harry Gill's right, that's Manzuna Deer, David Arthur Granger. Yeah, right there. The next picture, Kevin. That picture is the vehicle which was supposed to have David Granger in it, approaching the Pegasus. I didn't see any sign of hooligan. People wave placards in front of the vehicle. I don't know if he was in the vehicle, all right? But this is what he was talking about. These hooligans there, you see all those hooligans? Yeah. You know, those hooligans and 15% of the hooligans who used to support the PPP voted for David Arthur Granger. Those same hooligans. I don't know if I have a clearer picture of yours truly, Manzuna, dear, but I don't think I sent that one to Kevin. Kevin, did you get three pictures or four? Two. Kevin only got two. So if you go back to the second picture, right, that's the uh, Prado. With it, Dr. Karen Cummings in it, right? She drove through the protesters. I wouldn't say she attempted to run them over, 
But here was a picket line of thousands of people and Dr. Cummings driver and security chose to direct her path through this crowd. And where we are standing there behind us is a police barricade. So I don't know how we could go backward, right? So you had about 20 deep, a 20 deep crowd there of people. And all we were telling her to do is to go back, reverse, reverse. That's all. If you hear the, the videos and you will see them circulating on social media, this is what David Arthur Granger described as an attempt to overturn the vehicle with, you didn't say vehicle, you said car, but it's a Prado, uh, it's an SUV that Dr. Karen Cummings was in. No one tried to lift that car no one tried to topple that car. No one tried to harm Dr. Karen Cummings. In fact, Dr. Karen Cummings' security, he jumped out of the vehicle. And I'm telling you from first-hand experience, having spent, as David Granger said, half an hour holding her, he said, hostage. I don't know anybody held her hostage. Her driver, her security and she did not want to reverse all people were telling them to do is to reverse you can't pass so he came out the security came out and he attempted to push his way through the crowd to remove the police barricade and presidential candidate of the United Force Irfan Ali was basically saying to him why go back in the car and reverse and he started flaring up and I remember saying to Irfan, let him flare up. He will still have to go back in the car. He was trying to do a broom security on us. But I know Dr. Karen Cummings would never behave like Simona Brooms. Right? So far, I've known her. She doesn't and hasn't displayed any pathogen with, which infects David Granger or Simona Brooms. So... This picture, yes, tells a thousand words. All we're holding up in front of her is illegal, get beat out. Illegal, beat out. Right? That's all. So go back now to the text of David Granger's words. So David Granger, I don't know who's advising him, but he says now that um, we attempted to overthrow, overturn this vehicle with Dr. Cummings. Look at how big and strong I am. I'll pull my muscles so that Kevin could see, you know, this big, strong, fine coolie boy, right? Um, but David Granger in Port Kaituma is lying. I can't say twisting the truth. Nobody attempted to turn over any car in front of the Pegasus. And he compounds that with the same threat he made yesterday as he spoke to the Ghana Manufacturers Service Association luncheon. He said they will have to pay. David Granger is our father and mother. He got the big stick for beat me in line. He can make me pay. David Granger. He says that attempt would not go unpaid. Yeah, David Granger, unleash. Unleash what you want to unleash. You know, when I went through the struggle against your hero, Forbes Barnum, I was less than 25 years old. I had two children, David Granger, small children and a wife. And I didn't back down from... Lyndon Forbes, Samson, Burnham, dictator. You think today, when I got nothing to lose, you and I are closer to the grave. I got anything to lose. I got one thing to gain, David Granger, and that is to ensure that democracy continues to take hold in Guyana. That's the only thing I have to gain for the children of this country. 
You know, our anthem, so well written, our heroes of yore, you're making new heroes today, David Granger. You made them before battle box more uh, martyrs in quarantine, 1970s. And you join in Basil Williams, who threw out the threat of the CCJ. You're talking about your constitutional David Granger. What? You, you breached the constitution since February. Because since early February, you should have announced the date for elections before March 21st. After March 21st, you would have had to go and beg President Jagdio for an extension of time. But you were too big. You are fathers. You're going to punish us. You're going to make us pay. Yeah. Yes, David Granger. You're going to make us pay. You don't realize how silly you look in the face of people. Let me tell you what one 14-year-old said in Toronto during this summer. When asked, and a discussion was happening among some older people, parents and grandparents, uncle, aunt, and the, the issue come up, and people were talking about how David Granger is nothing but a dictator. And the young person, all he said was, he is greedy, hungry for power, and want a thief. That's the image, David Granger, you're leaving in the eyes of young people. And that was a Guyanese visiting in Canada, spreading that. A young person who got nothing to pin on you, except from what is being said by yourself and what you are failing to do for the children of the nation. This morning, David Granger, I had the opportunity to ride with another young person, 20. We'll be 21, right? And looking forward to helping her mom because things are tough and she got a job and she was heading down to the park, my neighbors. So I said, how's everything? She says, a little rough because mom is still not working. She's getting a few bits here and there. And this is somebody who supported you and your coalition administration, David Granger, the mom I'm speaking of. So the young person said, you know, I don't like to think about what is going on in my country because this government don't know what they are about. That's what they said. That your government doesn't know what it's about. And you have done nothing for the same young people who voted for you in the last elections. She didn't vote. She didn't vote. She wasn't of age. But a lot of our friends did. And this is what the young person said. But what she was more worried about, and she's not, she's forced people, this is her month, this is Indigenous Month, heritage celebrations happening right now at Everest David Granger. Good? And this is her month. And you know, she said she was standing at a friend waiting for her taxi to come and someone came up to her and robbed her and he said we're going to have to deal with all you coolie people this is an Amerindian or here straight and she said this is what she doesn't like about what is happening in our country and you have the temerity to lecture us about social cohesion you have the temerity David Arthur Granger to lecture us about coalition. Kevin, you could come back and put my handsome face on the TV. Thank you very much. Yes. So, this is how I want to start today. Because what happened yesterday was democracy at work, a peaceful protest. Vociferous, I agree. Vociferous, I agree. What happened in spite of the torrential downpour yesterday didn't dampen the spirit of democratic, loving people. As one person said, we got drenched 
we got dry and we got sweat wet. Good? You are basically bringing out the best wordsmithing in our people, David Granger. So thank you for what you do. Continue to threaten the people. Continue to threaten violence. Remember, there is an international court in The Hague. You know how many people who started the issue in Rwanda is facing right now there? You are occupying a position illegally, David Granger. Illegally. And you are making all these security forces obey illegal orders. You know who started all this? Not Bar Jagdio. David Arthur Granger refusing to set a date for elections within the three months of a no confidence vote. What happened? There was a valid voters list that would have expired a month and two weeks after an election would have been called. This was entirely of David Arthur Granger's making. Nobody else. Singularly, David Arthur Granger's making. Whatever has developed into a crisis is because of David Arthur Granger and no one else. So, David Arthur Granger, every dictator has a lifespan. Every dictator. Cherry Jagan struggled for 28 years to get rid of your predecessor's dictatorship. We didn't have social media. We didn't have an informed population. We didn't have people passionate about their country as now. So David Granger, you talk about social cohesion and you're the most divisive element in our country. The young people, they say your David Granger buses this past so many villages and pick up in other villages and you have the gall, gumption, temerity. You got the kohu something to tell people about social cohesion when this is what you practice. But I want to stop on David Arthur Granger for now. Because more will be said of David Arthur Granger in the next 24 hours, 48 hours, and until he calls an election. I got three positions I want to outline tonight. And I have no, no apologies to make if I take most of tonight's program time for myself. First, we commend the Americans, the British, and the European Union. And I also commend the Canadians for the positions, and hear me carefully, that have been taken. The Canadians did protect their citizen, Charandas. The Americans, the British, and the Canadians, they have a charter with all of the countries of the OAS to promote and to protect democracy. Signed in Quebec. Signed in Quebec to protect democracy. So while the Canadians didn't sign this press release issued by the A and the B and the E, I still give them top commendations. The Americans, the British, and the European came out quite swiftly and made their pronouncements. They, I'm confident they would have been patient because they're waiting since March. I'm sure they have had this letter in their hands waiting since March. Look at the first backlash and then you're talking about all you could say over and over again, David Granger, is I am constitutional. There's a fine line between constitutional that 
the repetition of that, fa- that phrase will make you constipational. The second thing I want to make, point I want to make is that CARICOM. CARICOM once again has been a bitter disappointment to the people of this country. I'll come back as the second point. And tonight, I'm saying it publicly. I am starting a guy exit campaign for Guyana to withdraw from CARICOM. So three things tonight. I dealt with David Granger and his hooliganism, and I uphold my hand. I pledged David Granger. I am one of the hooligans who was in front of the Pegasus and in front of Karen Cummings' car. I can be made to pay for that. My father, David Granger. The second thing I want to say, I'm going to come back to that, is the silence of CARICOM once again. And the third thing I want to say is, tonight is the launch of my guy exit campaign. We must leave CARICOM. Let's now deal with CARICOM as an institution. I have repeated this on umpteen occasions. CARICOM was established by the Tribis, Bird, Barrow, and Burnham. After the West Indian Federation failed, Bird, Barrow, Bird Prime Minister, Veer Bird of Antigua, Errol Barrow from Barbados, and Forbes Burnham from Guyana, decided to have a Caribbean free trade area between Barbados, Antigua, and Guyana. And so started CARIFTA, which later became CARICOM. With all the years that went by, CARICOM had and still have three functions. Foreign policy coordination, functional cooperation, meaning we can cooperate in areas of air safety, weather monitoring, disaster relief, environmental protection. That's the functional cooperation. And the third, the third, the third objective of CARICOM is economic integration. And economic integration takes many forms. It can be a free trade area. It can be a fully integrated free trade area. It could be a monetary union. And it could be a full, a full integrated block with freedom of capital and freedom of people moving here and there. Right? Well, that's what CARICOM was supposed to be. CARICOM has a big issue. CARICOM has a position where every single one of the heads of government, and we have 15 of them now, has to agree on everything. It's called unanimity provision. If one person objects and 14 other ones, let's say 14 wants to support a program for the Bahamas, and one decides no, then it can't go. And this is part of the big problem with CARICOM. That's why it is so slow to move. And I, I, can, I, can, I can tell you uh, so much about the integration movement in CARICOM. Now, CARICOM has its headquarters in Guyana. Burnham, for his own politics, said we're going to host CARICOM. We're going to host the headquarters. And so Guyana pays for the buildings. We pay the rent. We pay the electricity. And we make a contribution to it's the running costs. That's the salaries, the stationery, the travel, the conference. We make a big contribution. So we foot a large bill in CARICOM. We hardly complain. We foot the bill. You know, I'll take my hat off the Chetty Jagan. When we had to get more places at law school, way back in the 90s, CARICOM Council of Legal Education met. And in order to consider having our students get access, that's how the 25 places come, Chetty Jagan had to pay in excess of 250,000 US, and I'm talking here in 1993, 94, 
to host a meeting and bring back all these people who could have acted by telephone to a meeting. All of them. And he paid that because of our young people. He paid that. Then, every seven years, every six years, at eight, nine percent, that money doubles. So count 1993-94 to 2000. That 250 would have been half a million US. By the year 2007, that would have been a million US. By the year 2014, that would have been 4 million US. And by 2019, that would have been almost 8 to 10 million US. That's what that investment in getting our children into law school is. He paid it because of the future of Guyanese children, the future of young Guyanese lawyers being secured. He paid it. CARICOM, let's go back now from the time Barnum started Tiffin elections. 1968, they were now forming the Carifta area. By 1972, right, we had big issues. Right? Everyone knew he was a dictator, non democratic. Because we'd already gone through the 68 elections, we would have gone through the 72 elections, and so forth. Morris Bishop came on the scene, and he was a revolution in Grenada. CARICOM stayed silent. Because anything you pass against Bishop, you would have had to pass against Barnum. CARICOM stayed silent. And remember, Bishop and Barnum sat sitting at the same table. They are not going to agree on anything against them. That's Barnum and Bishop. Bishop gets overthrown. When Bernard Cord, and uh, yes, I'm living history. I had to read this. I experience it. I live it. When Bernard Card now overthrew Bishop, good. There's a regional security system, RSS, among the Eastern Caribbean states. Something similar to what we have at the OAS. And the Americans were invited, because they are part of this pact, invited in to intervene in this bloodshed that was happening in Grenada. And they were invited in primarily by Eugenia Charles, who was the chairman of the OECS at that time, James Mitchell, Vera Bird, John Compton. They acted swiftly. I think really that was 1983. You know, it took the Caribbean another seven years to really start mounting some pressure on height. Yeah. And it's this problem that we're going to be having with CARICOM. Until now, and we have a lot of Caribbean countries we're good friends with. Until now, the deafening silence of CARICOM on the unconstitutional behavior of David Granger, that deafening silence is making us literally deaf. Their dumbness, their dumbness literally is almost like a death sentence for Guyanese. So we have seen CARICOM fail us once. It took 28 years to get the PNC out. We have seen them failing us twice. You know, they got the old saying, you know, if you fool me once, shame on you. If you fool me twice, shame on me. <laughs> we can't get fooled twice. Those who are saying that CARICOM 
is waiting and they have to all agree? Well, watch. I don't know Rowley. I know Keith Mitchell. I don't know the Prime Minister, St. Vincent, but I know Shastney. I don't, I never trusted um, the guy in Dominica. He's there for a long time, right? I know Billy's. I know Jamaica. So, but I can't paint all of them with one brush. But CARICOM as an institution, I can show the whole red paint on them. And this is why I'm saying now, not because we got oil on the scene. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why uh, I'm not going to turn our back, and we should not, on other Caribbean countries. In spite of turning back, a lot of Guyanese in Trinidad, way back in the 80s, Trinidad put up 40 million, 44 million US dollars in foreign exchange. Uh, uh, they call it a window, they call it um, a special provision. And what happened that time, it was hard to get foreign exchange. And so countries that have foreign exchange challenges like Guyana could have access this facility through CARICOM and pay for the goods. Somehow Ghana used up most of the money, right? But Trinidad made that provision. But CARICOM as an institution is failing us. The issue of before Shasne can speak on behalf of CARICOM, he has to get for something called the Bureau, which is a three-member heading comprising the outgoing chairman of CARICOM, the current chairman of CARICOM, and the incoming chairman. So the Bureau will have to meet. And they have something called an intercessional meeting in February. Well, Alan, by the time that intercessional comes, we probably will have elections. And you will be dealing with a new head of government. And you are dealing with us lobbying for guy exit. That is us removing from CARICOM. We have to. Look at the amount of harm that has happened. Let's take a man like the Honorine Singh, who had did go. Millions of dollars invested in an integrated poultry system, right? USDA certified processing plant, USDA approved uh, pens for chicken, integrated feed mill operations. And, and at that time, it used to be like for leg quarters, seven to 11 cents a pound. Breast used to sell for $2.64, right? Yeah, yours truly was the Minister of Commerce. And I, I, I have vivid knowledge of the prices, also an active, very active and integrative memory. The Singh now could have sent to all the Caribbean countries at the most competitive price the white meat part of the chicken. You know what, Trinidad, the biggest market closest to us. Block it. Little Barbados, it took us two years and we had to station one of their phytosanitary officers on the ground in Guyana for two years before they could approve our pineapples going. This guy used to have to come and inspect every leaf, every bud, every ant for two years. Look what happens with our rice. We had to have a special provision between the Bureau of Standards in Jamaica and the Bureau of Standards in Guyana, right? Before rice could get back into America. So this is supposed to be the economic integration part of CARICOM, which failed Guyanese industry, fail us. So my position is, CARICOM wants to stay in the building here. Yeah, you got to do a trump on them. They could stay, but we ain't paying the bill. Guyana will have to do what I call bilaterals. We go to Bahamas, and we have to set aside 15, 20% of our oil revenues to help other people, the poor people. If you're Muslim, you got to cut it in three. Quart, one third, one third, one third. Keep one third for your family, give one third to the church, and give one third to the poor. 
right? We got to set up some provisions. And we could end up in a bilateral reconstruction program with Bahamas. Let's say there is a need in Dominica. We could do a program with Dominica. We can do a program with Trinidad. We can do a program with St. Lucia. We could do a program with St. Kitts. Don't tell me about how more costly it will be. Because Guyanese are paying today the ultimate cost, the ultimate cost in terms of the political mess and having to live on that dictatorship. If you have to live on that dictatorship for one day, it's like if you're living on that dictatorship for a thousand years. You can't capture people's spirit. Granger, CARICOM. So I am going to be starting a guy exit campaign that we must, as soon as this election is over, have a referendum on the withdrawal of Guyana from CARICOM. And what is in place will be bilateral. We will have bilateral programs with sistering countries. Listen, Trump threw out the whole WTO issues. WTO can't go and impose one dollar of penalty on Trump. Trump take on China, and Trump and China dealing now to work out a more favorable deal. You know, for 15 years, the Americans were saying to the Chinese, your currency is too high. Your currency is too high. You have to devalue it. And it has moved from about five yuan for US dollar to now it's about six dollars and eighty-nine. Six point eight nine yuan. So sometimes you gotta really step back, look and see if what you're doing has really been delivering the goods for your people and delivering the goods for your people in a manner that is acceptable to them and expeditious. So I think it's time now we have to step back and look at getting out of CARICOM. If CARICOM wants a program that they will share, they can come and sit with us and we will talk and see how we can contribute to it. Right? Don't tell me, don't tell me CARICOM. Don't tell me ABC funders, Japan, and the European Union about it's better if we have regional programs. You know, our experience in government is that every dollar in aid that comes into the region, half goes off into administrative costs. Regional administrative costs. Half of the half goes into local administrative costs and a quarter gets to the program. It's been big leakage. I've been complaining about that and we've taken action. So, Guyana has to exit CARICOM. We're not leaving our brothers and sisters in the Caribbean. We're exiting the collective. We prefer to deal with you one on one. So we have a problem in Guyana. I can pick up the phone and say, Trinidad, I know you're very strong on the issue of free movement of poultry products. This is the issue. Let's sit down and talk. Trinidad now don't have to go back to CARICOM and get all other 13 countries to agree. If Trinidad and Guyana wants to get ahead, let them get ahead. Right? So this is the position we have to take. And it's important because every time the PNC gets into power, you have a dictatorship. They've been in power once before, we ended up with a 24-year dictatorship, right? They're in power for four years now. We're in a dictatorship again. Come on. You fool me once, shame on you. You fool me twice, shame on me. Shame on me. So the three points for me is David Arthur Granger, pathological liar. Two, CARICOM's 
deafening silence is murdering us and three time to start guy exit or program for exiting Canada. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Nadia, you Tell got picketing yesterday. Yes, and I, I, I put a picture up so if David Granger wants to send the charges, he can. No, he said I got you behind bars a long time for the building where you build a princess and high street was CC. It is alleged that CC is coming up and they need to Yes, it's that you, 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 you building. You mentioned that a long time for that building. You should have been out there picketing. You mentioned it is alleged that CC shit is you don't understand is coming up at the bottom of that building uh -huh. and that is why it cannot be utilized. Okay. You know yes, better than I do. Because you would have been behind bars. You of all persons would not have been there sitting on that station there. Thank you, sweetheart. Good. So that one person is saying Manzu should be behind bars because of the high street building that was started and never completed. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Tell me. Indians are not exactly to cohesion. It's going to have Pakistan. It's going to have Kashmir. Chandra Prasad is a mandir in Fees, saying that he conspired with the PPP to even... Well, <laughs> I, I think you got your facts extremely wrong. Charandas has always said, and I know him very well, so you can't tell me crap about Charandas, right? Charandas never said he conspired with the PPP. That is what the PNC people are spreading. Led that also started boiling up because Kemraj Ramjatan talked about the Mahatek goal. Kemraj. Hi, good evening. Hold no bars. How are you tonight? Excellent. Okay, I was looking at, I was not at the desk, but I was looking at it, right? Uh -huh. I'm sure they had journalists there. Mm -hmm. How did not, how did the, the journalists capture all the President Ranger was saying about overthrowing the card? The, the journalists were there. I'm not hearing any journalists saying anything like that. Also, another thing I think I kind of observed for, the, for, for some time now, Mr. Ranger has me was kind of disoriented. He contradicts everything he says. He says something and then he changes his mouth. Maybe the pressure of him demanding office has psychologically, and psych um, he needs psychological help, and probably needs to go to the hospital and be medical care. Thank you. I, I, could, I don't understand what, what is going on. Also, at the same time, I'm hearing, I'm hearing them say, um, the PNC and the supporters saying, why don't um, the Americans get involved in their domestic affairs? Mm -hmm. If they, if they do not get involved, what are the roles of the diplomats in this country? Thank you. Excellent. And um, I want to say to the caller the observation about the particular media houses talking about what they saw. All of them were there covering this thing, right? So if they so love David Granger, just show the footage that Manzoor lift his strong hands. I got definition in the muscle, right? And try to lift up Karen's bumper, right? And topple it, you know. Hi. You're on the air, hold no bars. Okay, so I have a lot of calls coming through. I have the, um, the WhatsApp line is giving me some trouble. In fact, I'm doing a feed on the WhatsApp line, so I can't take the WhatsApp calls, right, or the cell phone calls. Hi, good evening, you're on the air. Go ahead, if you talk garbage, I'll cut you off. I'm not thinking garbage. Go ahead. You cannot use social media conveniently. You have to use social media in its entirety. Uh -huh. no, I, I don't use social media, actually. Huh? I don't use social media. I cut off my Facebook page seven years ago. Seven years ago? Yeah, it's a bunch of, bunch of gossips and people don't got nothing to do. So what people social media is the PSG put it there with Chandar Bazaar in the Mandir? You, you know something called fake news? They're not fake news. Fake news, right? Fake news, because I know Charandas, right? I spoke with him the night after he did that. He called. Right. So we got two rules with respect to tasting God. You could talk what you want. I had a good chance. But if your line is private, I don't take you. And if you, re if you call back a second time, I don't take you. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hold no bars. 
Hi, good night. Good evening. My issue is that you guys are bringing up the past. Also, you guys mm. are mentioning different Caribbean countries, and mm. this the fact of the matter is that these things have nothing to do with the future of Guyana, and you guys in, aren't even presenting anything sensible towards the future. Okay, and tell me you have every know, single uh, week, Irfan Ali is issuing a statement with a manifesto. There's a live interview for half an hour every single week. Apparently, we are not reaching you. So I really want to thank you for the observation because we have to broaden the avenues with which we are spreading the message of our plans. Go ahead. I like the fact that I brought up in finale as well. And the truth is, why is it that the opposition leader is more vocal than the next president? Okay, I've dealt with that, that every week. The opposition leader is the opposition leader. He's the official title holder to speak on behalf of the opposition. Irfan Ali has been out there with the people and also outlining his plans because he is going to be the chairperson of cabinet and it is the team plans which he has to speak about. Go ahead. I'm still okay, I understand. So just to summarize that, mm -hmm. the opposition leader will be using Irfan Ali as a puppet. Correct. If you say so, then that's your opinion. Irfan Ali has been speaking about his plans and his team's plans. And I just wanted to ask you one question. So we must never look back at history and learn lessons from them. That's what you're saying. Okay. So the lines are open again. And um, the person had to say, I'll tell you. As I said, if you fool me once, shame on you. If you fool me twice, shame on me. If I don't look back, and see what you did when you fooled me the first time. I'm not going to learn something this time. David Arthur Granger says, a historian, those who forget the past, right, will be condemned to making the same mistakes. Hi, good evening. Sorry, that person is a no ID. I can't take no IDs, right? I don't want to monitor your number. But in the event that the Guyana National Broadcasting Authority, who is now finding every excuse to find broadcasting houses and pull them off the air, we have to be able to refer back, right? So you can gotta unblock your numbers if you wanna come through. Incoming call private. Uh, and this one here, this one has one number. Hi, good evening, you're on the air. Uh, hello, good night. Good evening. Uh, I call and call every Every president mm -hmm. going in the country, they are always asking what they will do and what they will do. But since then, check the jazz went to the country, we are using the word and say, when you go down, when you go down with twenty thousand dollars, you will get change for buy sweets and stuff, for carry on for your and stuff. And all of that is a bundle. Like when you go in power, even raise everything. Okay. Good. That's it. Okay. So politicians are liars. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. That one, I missed that one. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Mr. Nagy. Go ahead. You know, Mr. Violan. Good. How are you tonight? All is well, man. I think I, I get a lot of more education when you're vexed, man. Oh, I get a lot of, I get a lot of historical education. I wasn't, I wasn't vexed, man. I was just passionate. Yeah, man. Remember to say, ask him deep now, laugh. Man, I want you cool, I want you focus. The only way me you could carry on a good conversation. Go ahead, you have the year now. I hear now, like when you protest against this government mm -hmm. corruption, mm -hmm. like the only way you could have peace in this country is when you allow this government to do what they want. Mm -hmm. Is what they're saying to me. Yep. That's the only way we can have peace when we allow them to be. Uh, corrupt and, and have their own way. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Charon Das, I want to talk about. Go ahead. Who appointed Charon Das to the parliament mm -hmm. knowing that he had a dual citizenship? Mm -hmm. They didn't know when they appointed him to the parliament it was illegal. Mm -hmm. And why are they blaming people for Charon Das's uh, infidelity to them? Right? Mm -hmm. They were up to child that somebody uh, think they should not blame anybody for that. Mm -hmm. And one more thing, that decision by the, the election commission chairman, mm -hmm. is she abiding by the constitution? Mm -hmm. 
when she made that decision to uh, uh, have the election in 2020? Personally, do you, do you think that she is abiding by the Constitution a lot and is she to be trusted in an election scenario? Well, personally, I don't think she is abiding by the law when she says she's going to operate by the law. Now, how she come to that conclusion that election Because first of all, the Chief Justice said that uh -huh. Cross referenced the name. Don't yes. merge the list. She didn't say anything about merging. She said Cross referenced. No, but how she end up the next year being the date for election? All, 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 all the Claudette Singh did, all the Claudette Singh did was they put 55 days between nomination and elections, right? And she, she cut that down to the regular 32, 33 days. No, but is she, does she have to abide by the secretariat? No, um, she doesn't. Decisions? No, she doesn't. So how is it that she reached still over to that? Well, that she's, trying, she's trying to play, um, you know, she straight in the middle, a little lash over here, a little lash over there. No, no, but what I said, she had to compromise maybe uh, we are not going to have this merger and we are not going to allow the household registration and if you accept we won't allow that, well then I will give you 2020 election date. Something uh, like they go and <laughs> you, you said the commission does negotiate like that, right? What happened to the other side of the commission? Yeah. What happened in that? Anyway, that's right, right? Good man. Always great to have an exchange with you. Very interactive. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Mr. Nadia. Good night. Good evening. How are you doing, buddy? All is well, man. Okay. I see that you get a little um, passionate tonight. Um, first, I must con congratulate Mr. Marajagil for the hard work and you really to mm -hmm. And secondly, I must say, we don't have a president in this country right now. Mm -hmm. And Only David, David Granger and his cohorts know, don't know that. And I think... If you, if they say that you are going to stop the vehicle, I think that would be on, on all the news. Of course. That would be on <laughs> all the news. Yeah. Who in that man who going on to one I don't know all of a sudden so my um, man who turn Hulk Hogan or something. Yeah. You are so powerful man, I, I, I don't know. But um. I have bionic arms and legs. Yeah. But you, you was, you, you, you took me on the, on, on the picture that how you were standing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how the he how he is saying that you're going to tap the, the, the Well, he's talking about all of us, right? Jack Dio and Irfan Ali. Yeah, we, it's we hooligans. It's, no, we are not hooligans. We are peaceful protesters. We are born in, we are losing. Well, from today, I agree with David Granger. We are all hooligans. Yeah, we are all. Yes. Yeah, including him. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Good. Got five minutes remaining on the program. It's been hot. I haven't been able to take some of the calls on the cell phone. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, Mr. Dear. How? What took you so long, man? I can't get through. Oh, shucks. The, okay. Those Granger um, people have been blocking up the lines. Oh, they've been yeah. calling and hanging up then? The, um, the strategic um, operation have, of yeah. Emerald Green has been exposed. Emerald green, but that's um, what I got behind me, you know. I got green <laughs> behind me. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I've been whining all day, so now I'm not sure what it's like. I came across Aubrey Aubrey Norton uh -huh. talking on Channel 11 this evening. Yeah, he calling Barjack Day an imp. Yeah, he also said the CCJ did not tell the this government that. The election is due in September. The Constitutional well, tell David Granger exactly, and company. I want Aubrey Norton to teach exactly. David Granger what Diana's law and rule says. Okay, I'm giving you half a second more. All right. Um, 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 Good, you're gone. Bye-bye. I got to get other people to come in. Keep your thoughts fast, right? I just got three minutes remaining on the program. Let's get it fast and sweet. All right? Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good night, how are you? All is well, man. What I know is to see the PPP get very brave. I don't think anybody was ever covered, it's just that we're peaceful. So I'm watching now the protesting and things get very brave. If it was there, man, I start carving and things they would do. This is a great deal too sad for them. Okay, thank you very much. Well, I want to say that Mahatma Gandhi also was um, that kind of protest, you know. 
in the face of confrontation, he told people to lay down in front of the horses, right? So we'll take a couple more calls. I have a RB calling. You've called once and tried to get through two times. What I'll do now is just close off the program asking Kevin to run, first of all, the words of David Granger in Port Kaituma this afternoon, right? And for all of you out there, this is what David Granger said today, right? He says, we tried to topple the vehicle with Minister Cummings, which is a lie. No one ever tried to topple it. And secondly, he says that it would not go unpaid. So David Granger is my father because I was in front of the vehicle. And he's going to make me pay. So when you hear I pay, you know that Granger made me pay. So that's what he said. And I now ask Kevin to put the two pictures up. First, the picture with us and Karen Cummings, right? That's us in front of Karen Cummings' vehicle. At the side of the vehicle, you had about uh, 18 inches of space. Her vehicle had drove up to us. Behind us was a police barricade. We would have had to push down that barricade, fall down on that barricade for her to come forward. All we were telling Cummings to do was to reverse. And the next one, these are the hooligans who um, were around David Granger's car, vehicles, entourage. I don't know if he was in the vehicle, but I didn't see anybody come closer than a body length to that vehicle of David Granger. And he went into the meeting and said he was accosted by a bunch of hooligans. Remind everyone, the electorate that usually supports the People's Progressive Party, right, was out there. They were labeled as hooligans. 15% of that electorate, that hooliganish electorate, voted for David Granger in 2015. Tonight, I said that Guyana is, we are very disappointed in the response from CARICOM. And secondly, I start a guy exit campaign from tonight. Guyana must withdraw from CARICOM. We're talking about CARICOM body. We're not abandoning our brothers and sisters in the region. So from all of us here, Kevin, the directors, and on my own behalf, I thank you all for interacting with us once again and wish you a pleasant rest of the evening. Good night.